Hi, this is Medievalist.net, and we are here at the Great Medieval Northern Fair in uh, Ontario, Canada. And I'm here with Shane Adams, who is the reigning world jousting champion. Yes, yes. And, and congratulations on that, first of all. Well, thank you. It's, uh, it's, it's, it's a great honor, because, hey, number one, I'm, I'm, I'm just a Canadian you know, kid living his dream. You know what I mean? It's uh, growing up as a four-year-old boy, I, you know, I didn't know if I was going to be a, a cowboy or a knight. Uh, I was just blessed to be uh, on a horse farm and uh, ironically held on to that dream and sure enough ended up with the Calgary Stampede in 2005 and won a great big silver belt buckle and made 20 grand too, so uh, it's well, awesome. you got to put the athletic background. <laughs> it's, uh, well, to be a knight, of course, uh, you know, knight, mountain man in arms, it, you have to have that connection with the horse. So uh, to be an athlete is one thing, but you have to, number one, A number one, at all times, you have to be an equestrian first. So at first it's the connection between you and the horse, then it's the technique, and then it's your athletic ability. And, you know, I guess most importantly, it, it comes to heart. You need the heart. Yeah. Now, uh, like, you know these horses here, and like, how much training that you have to do with the horses for this kind of uh, event? Well, do you know what? There's, there's a lot of training that has to go into them. There's a lot of trust training. Um, you know, like people have heard about natural horsemanship and such like that, but you know, really, natural horsemanship started in the night safe. You know, uh, it's uh, two years ago, well, actually, just last year. This last year, I did a show and Monty Roberts, you know, the, the horse whisperer himself. Okay. Um, uh, we did a show with him down in uh, Columbus, Ohio, and, and he came up and he said, You know, I think you guys are fantastic. And, and by the way, how do you get them horses to run at each other? That, you know, because it's, it's completely unnatural for a horse to actually charge at another horse. Um, you know, of these guys here, this is this horse right behind me. He's my 19 year old Percheron Stallion. Um, he's a rescue horse, as the majority of our horses are. They're rescued safe from slaughterhouses and such. Um, he was saved uh, from, uh, from, a, from a barn, poor conditions at a, at a farm. And uh, it a number one again is connection with the horse. So you have to work with the horse, you have to gain the horse's trust. And once you gain a horse's trust, you can teach it to do you can basically do anything with it. You know what I mean? As long as you're there with it, you can you can you can have it you know, jumping off the cliff, jumping in the water, you know, getting up on him in, in full armor and, and charging them into the horse. As long as you have that trust, that connection, you know, you, you'll be alright. Now to gain that trust, it it takes it takes a long time. You know, A number one, you know. You know, the human race is a, is a hunting race, you know, we hunt. Horses are a prey animal, you know, so to basically, for, for a prey animal to trust, you know, a potential yeah. threat, it, it's, it's a big it's a big thing. So I think a lot of it's, uh, you know, somewhat you know, spiritual in your soul. I mean, you have to have that connection with the horse to get a treat. Now, like, you, you have to wear ar lower armor, horses lower armor, a lot of protection goes involved in this, yeah. but there's still things to <laughs> It's a fairly, uh, can be a, a, a fairly dangerous. Okay, well let's, you know, let's not, I mean, let's not fool anybody. Yeah, like what we're doing is, is dangerous. It, don't get me wrong. It's, uh, uh, you know, we, we go through all the safe, you know, safety standards. We, you know, we have our equipment, our armor is top notch, our horses are top notch, the training is top notch, but in the end it comes down to physics. You know, you get two guys charging at each other on horses, and you know, with full solid wooden lances and the intent to unhorse each other, they're hitting each other with about 5,000 pounds of force. Jousting. You know, really, what can happen? <laughs> right? So, yeah, a lot happens. So, um, yeah, we've, we've been plagued with injuries, of course, uh, um, just like the knights back in the days of old have. You know, it's, uh, you know, I've broken my hand so many times. I've, you know, broken ribs. Uh, one of my guys here has broken about a total of 15 ribs in two years. And, uh, you know the injuries. The injuries are there. And, and you know, just this morning, I had one of my guys dislocate his shoulder. Um, but really, broken bones, contusions, hematomas, concussions, sprains, uh, fractures. You know, they're really not considered injuries if you're a jouster. They yeah, wow. <laughs> but I guess it's still a lot of fun, and you're, you're quite seem to be like, quite enjoying yourself. Do you know what? For for any person to not have fun doing this, well, a number one shouldn't be doing it. You know what I mean? It's a, really I'm I'm that four year old kid living his childhood dream. So you know what person would, would hate that? And was that you or was that the oh, Sorry, that was the horse. <laughs> yeah. See again, you know we enjoy having we, have, we enjoy having a good time. You have to have a personality to be able to do this, but at the same time, 
most importantly, number one, you need to have heart, you need to have a connection with the horse, and then you have to, you know, play on your physical attributes to be able to, uh, to succeed in the sport. Well, thank you so much for having me. Thanks, guys. I appreciate it. Thank you.